Welcome to Saint-Tropez, arguably the best place in the world to launch this, the new McLaren GT. Now, this is the firm's first ever dedicated Grand Tourer model. It's designed to inject some luxury, some comfort and some refinement without losing the core McLaren attributes of high performance and engaging driving dynamics. Now, there's only one way to really test a GT car and that's with a really long journey. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to drive it from here back to the UK. Um, and it's a long way to the UK and I think it's uh, that way. Right, so we're on our way. now. Before we really get going, we've got the first big test for the McLaren here. It's all very well being fast and comfortable and refined across the ground, covering great distances, but it's got to be usable day to day. It's got to be easy to live with. The streets of Saint-Tropez are a very good test of that because they are tight, they're gnarled, there's lots of bumps and potholes, and yet the McLaren's remarkably good here. You know, McLaren have worked hard on the visibility and it's still a little bit limited out through the rear view mirror, but the rest of it, you know, there's lots of light. You feel confident and we've got the optional nose lift here easy to press got a massive speed bump we're just going over no scraping carbon fiber we like that it's remarkably wieldy this is the biggest mclaren this side of a speed tail um, it's longer a bit wider yet yeah, it's confidence inspiring thanks to that visibility and the ride is quite cushioned as well there's just a hint of firmness but it's not uncomfortable it's quieter, you still get the odd really quiet distant clonk, that sort of typical McLaren stiff structure kind of reverberation as, as the suspension's dealing with uh, all the bumps, but it's, it's supple, it's comfortable. Steering's quite light, the engine, it's remarkably muted. They've got this quiet startup, so it's not attracting attention, it's much more GT. It's, it's still there, that kind of hard-edged McLaren noise, but it's a lot less ostentatious than the other cars. So you could use this every day. So we've made our way out of Saint-Tropez now and we're onto some classic grand touring roads. So typical French D roads that are lightly trafficked, fast flowing, not the sort of roads that you really want to attack, you just make progress. So we've left everything still in comfort on the, uh, on the GT and uh, it's really rather nice along here. They've softened off the damping a bit and it just flows with the road, you can just glide along through corners you're making ground but you're not not really on it I've just left it in auto there's quite a lot of torque from the engine just pulling you along this is the way to travel it really is sun shining beautiful French scenery and uh, some lovely roads and as I say they're not roads that you want to just drive flat out on you just taking them in and the McLaren helps you there yes there's a supercar somewhere underneath here but it's not goading you on at the moment everything in comfort it just happily mooches along. It's nice. Now these flowing French D roads are very nice and all, but when they run along in the shadow of some of the finest driving roads in Europe, and you're driving a McLaren, you simply have to turn off as soon as possible and head for the mountains. Okay, so we've moved off the relaxing D roads and we've headed up one of the many coals that went their way across the mountains above Saint-Tropez. I can't remember exactly which coal this is, I'll be honest. Let's call it the colder flipping brilliant for argument's sake because it's just brilliant. Just you go around a corner and think, oh, that was a good one. It couldn't get better, and it does. It's amazing. What a road. So if the McLaren is going to shine, it's going to have to shine on these roads. Now let's deal with this engine for starters. So it's another iteration of the familiar twin turbo 4 litre V8. But in the GT, it gets a higher compression ratio and low inertia turbos, so it's supposed to have a friendlier, less spiky character than normal, a more gradual increase in boost, but it's still there, that distinctive McLaren character. They soften the edges, but you still get that slight build just below 2,000, 2,500 RPM, 3,000, and then it just takes off. It's got 612 brake horsepower, 465 pounds foot of torque, now it will rev out to 8,500 RPM, even though max power is 7,500. It's still got that traditional mechanical industrial noise that McLarens are so well known for, but to make this more of a GT car, they've softened off the edges, and I think it works much better, in fact. It's not the most glorious sounding unit, but it's got presence, and it's it means business, you can tell it means business, and my word, it flies when you give it the beans. 
and you get this lovely little turbo wastegate chatter. Like I say, it's not it's not operatic, it's not charismatic, but it's effective and the more you listen to it, the more you end up liking it. And we've got the seven speed twin clutch gearbox and up here it just throws one ratio after another up and down the box, it's so quick. And the brakes that felt a bit grabby and unhelpful around town suddenly makes sense. That longer pedal travel allows you to just to meet out the stopping power. And there is a lot of stopping power even on these iron discs, cast iron discs. You can cover some serious ground. Now it's not just the engine that's been softened off a little. The chassis has as well. There's the proactive dampers doing their thing. Now we've wound everything into sport here. You could have track as well, but it's just a little bit too harsh for the road. But in sport, my word, they are very, very good. It just breathes with the surface. It sort of glides over bumps. You're aware they're there. It's not magic carpet ride, but the control just the right side of firm, whereas a 600LT would be much, much, much harder in its control. This just rounds all the edges off but keeps the body flat, even breaking hard or throwing it into a corner. Body control is just phenomenal. Now, it would be very easy to call the GT a 720S in a more civilised suit, but um, McLaren claim that two thirds of the car is new and a lot of that is in the bodywork. Um, I don't know about you, but I actually quite like it. I think it looks really good, particularly in this burnished copper paintwork, but then so it should at £4,000. This car also has the electrochromatic roof, which you can tint or lighten at the touch of a button. That's a really nice touch. Um, we've already talked a bit about the engine. Uh, it's the mid-mounted four litre twin turbo V8, 612 brake horsepower, 456 pounds foot of torque. Um, but perhaps the most interesting thing about the GT is the fact that it's the first McLaren to get what they call proactive damping. So this is a step on from adaptive damping. It doesn't just react to the road. It has an algorithm that then uses the information it's getting to predict what's gonna happen next and set up the damping as a result. Now, in general, this car's a bit softer than uh, their normal cars, particularly at the front where they've tried to, what they call, give it a parallel movement as it goes over bumps. So it goes all of a, all of a piece to breathe with the road rather than follow every imperfection. Uh, and it does seem to work as, as we found out. Now, obviously this is a GT car, so um, apart from being luxurious and fast, it also has to carry luggage and that's where it gets interesting. So shall we have a look? So at the front, there's 150 litres of storage, but at the back here, McLaren have found 420 litres under this powered tailgate here. Neat touch. Now, McLaren have covered the boot floor with what they claim is material developed by NASA. It's allegedly indestructible, scratch proof, stain proof, you name it. Um, I don't know whether that's true, but it's pretty cool. Now, you're probably guessing that underneath this luggage compartment is the engine and above it is a very big area of glass. So your luggage is gonna get very hot indeed. Now, McLaren say they've thought about this. Very deep tint on the, uh, on the window here. And these vents here feed air underneath the luggage compartment and allegedly cool it. Now, McLaren say even when running really hard and fast, the interior of the luggage bay stays at 40 degrees centigrade, which still sounds quite hot to me. Still, anyway, another neat touch. That air is then channeled over the back here and over the catch for the, uh, the boot. So apparently you'll never get your fingers scorchio when you go to open the boot. The steering has been softened a little as well. So some of that hard edge grittiness that is a McLaren trademark, that constant little writhing away as you're even in a straight line, just letting you know what's going on. It's been, it's been muted a little bit, but not too much. It makes it much more easy to live with every day, but you're still getting a sense of communication. You still know what's happening at the, uh, the contact patch between tire and road. And it's, it's just the right side of quick. It's not Ferrari sneeze and you're off quick. It's really lovely rate of response. You can just place the car so well. And it's gone so fast. The balance, it's got that typical McLaren balance. Softer edged, but it's there. This beautiful all of a piece scything through corners. God, this road's brilliant. I love this road. 
you can just ease up to the edge of grip by being a bit softer it's a bit more approachable than some of the sports series stuff where on the road you really need to be giving it everything to start to get under its skin with this because there's a little more movement you can trust it a bit more it's on these roads just you can absolutely flow along the road it's fast it's so precise but it's flowing it's you just pour it down this lovely stretch of tarmac god i could do this all day britain uk's a long way away but i don't mind it can wait it's not it's not as sharp it's not as ultimately involving as say a 600 lt or a 720s but then in many ways that's a good thing because you can drive harder for longer because it's not wearing you out in quite the same way it's just it's on your side the whole time the engine is well it's really good it's got so much torque now they say the peak torque comes in at five and a half thousand rpm which is quite high but so much of it appears to be available from about three the super sports car part of this gt car because it has to do so many things as a sports car a DB11, a Bentley Continental GT. On these roads, bear in mind that this thing weighs about 1,500 kilos, so it's not the lightest McLaren by any stretch of the imagination, and it's longer than any other McLaren and a bit wider. But on roads like these, like I say, a DB11, a Conti GT, they would not see which way this car went. You just don't feel the mass in the way you do those cars. You always feel like you're constantly managing mass, whereas this, it almost feels like any other McLaren sports car. As I say, apart from that, just that little soft edge, that little bit of extra approachability. It just does not appear to be phased by anything, this car. Just throw it at a corner, feel the front end bite, gradually load up the rear, and away it goes. Oh! Yes, yes, I quite like this. This is a way to get around. I'm going to go out on a limb here and I'm going to say, for the road, this could be the best handling McLaren. Send the abuse and the comments below for that one. Right, time to put this boot to good use. Now, McLaren say you can fit two sets of golf clubs in here, but videographers don't travel light. And besides, I don't play golf. So we're going to pack our stuff up, end of day one, and we're going to go find ourselves a cold beer. Until then, we'll see you tomorrow. After all the excitement of yesterday, now comes the potentially boring bit. Time is tight and there's a toll booth tag in the McLaren's windscreen. So we're going to fight our way out of Valence and then it's auto route all the way from there. Okay, so we've been in the McLaren now for quite a few hours, five or six, lots of motorway time to get, get a feel for what it's like over a really long distance. And I've got to say, there's, uh, there's lots of good things here and also a few not so good things, niggles, shall we say. Um, the first thing, driving position, actually is really good. It's not quite as low as uh, you'd expect from a McLaren, but I think that's to do with the fact you've got electric motors underneath the seats. But it's really comfortable. These seats, which have been designed specifically for long distance comfort, are really good. I've, as I say, I've been in here for about five hours straight so far, and no aches and pains. Steering's where you want it to be. You know, you can, there's so much adjustment. It's, it's a really nice and comfortable place to be. Ride is also pretty good on the motorway. Those proactive dampers do a really good job and it, it does do what McLaren say, that sort of parallel thing where the front and the back seem to move at the same time so you get this sensation the car's breathing with the road. Less impressive is the wind noise, it's a bit noisy in here even at sort of gendarme friendly speeds there's quite a lot of rustle coming around the A-pillars and the door mirrors. Um, a Bentley is a quieter car to be in, it has to be said, if you're doing lots and lots of long distances and you like near silence the Bentley's the car where the McLaren scores is the super sports car bit we did back in the mountains, those really lovely roads. Its ability is leagues beyond a DB11 or a Conti GT, whereas 
the gap between it and those cars as a long distance cruiser is is there but it's not as big so it's it's all about balance isn't it compromise what do you want do you want a really quick exciting car that's also pretty good on the motorway or do you want one that's really quiet and refined and okay on a back road i mean that's that's what for you to decide me mm, you know it's it's a balance right so what else have we got niggles well first big niggle is i wear polarized sunglasses and when i put them on I can't see anything on the infotainment screen. It literally goes blank, which for a car that's supposed to be cruising down to the south of France in glorious weather, probably not a good thing. Uh, other little niggle, uh, maybe the glove box. It's got one of these touch sensitive releases, which only works when the ignition's on, which I guess is a security feature, but when you're just about to get out of the car and then you remember you left something in there, a bit irritating to have to fumble for the key, switch the ignition back on just to get in the glove box. Like I say, these are minor niggles, nothing, nothing major. Okay, so another quirk is that luggage compartment. Now, McLaren obviously made play of saying that they managed to keep temperatures to around 40 degrees centigrade. And while the car is moving at speed, there's airflow doing its cooling thing, that does work. But you work the car hard on some, like I say, our mountain roads or stop start traffic, and you do get heat soak. And when we got to the hotel, Ollie discovered that most of his toiletries have basically turned to some hideous alien gloop. One thing that has impressed on this car is the fuel consumption on the motorway. Now, I know we shouldn't really be talking about fuel consumption with a 200,000 pound McLaren, but we've been cruising, as I say, <coughs> gendarme friendly speeds, and it's been returning anything between 35 and 30 mpg, which is pretty good for a 600 plus horsepower twin turbocharged V8, what is effectively a supercar. Of course, it also did 7.7 .7 mpg in the mountain, so you know, swings and roundabouts. Of course, another real positive is the fit and finish in here. Now, it's it's not traditional in the wooden leather GT style. It's very McLaren, but there is actually lots of leather, lots of soft leather on the doors, dashboard, and it looks and feels really nice. The stitching's lovely. And then there's lots of knurled metal finish. It just gives the whole car a kind of classy GT upmarket atmosphere. They even changed the paddles here, so it's still got the same rocker mechanism, but they've got this lovely solid metal, and it just lovely cold to the touch and it looks, looks right in a GT car. The whole interior just feels special and surely that's part of being a GT car is to have a car that you get in and think, hmm, this is nice. Talking of the engine, you don't really hear it as much now. They've, they have quietened it down. You get a bit of a low McLaren baritone when you open the throttle, but the rest of the time it's very muted. What you don't get, despite the low inertia turbos, is that instant response in seventh gear. So when they someone bolts you in traffic and then you want to suddenly go, put your foot down and it just takes a while to pick up and then 2,000 RPM comes along and then it goes. Quite often it'll change down a couple of gears, which, you know, it's not the end of the world, but you'd expect a bit more flexibility from a GT. So here we are at Calais, finally made our way to the channel. Been a long old journey, but actually feel remarkably refreshed gonna get ourselves on the train first though and that could be a bit nip and tuck in this car here we are last few meters of France gonna slide our way onto the train now so breathe in I'm sure it's gonna fit don't think about the forged alloy wheels don't think about them don't think about them oh actually oh look at this this is good They've put us on a train for special people like me. Extra wide one. After half an hour on the train, we're back in the UK. The average speed camera patrolled and roadwork littered M20 is a stark contrast to the continental glamour of the past 48 hours. But in the murky stop-start traffic, we've still got those mountain memories. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss out on another autocar video.